I got the like most basic one, which is just like a English muffin with a slab of sausage and cheese and a little bit of scrambled egg that was scrambled probably three weeks ago and then frozen. Of course. Okay. <laughs> have you fine. have you gotten a chance to try the uh, fried chicken McGriddle from McDonald's? No, yet? but my roommate says it's really good, and I always try to like want to go for it because it's like the perfect like chicken waffles like vibe yeah. for me. Like it, it like hits those all of those syrup pockets. Yeah, syrup pockets. Like little. I just want to get like pieces of bread and it has syrup, syrup in it. Have you have you had a McGriddle? I. No. <laughs> uh, it's it's basically like their breakfast sandwich, but instead of like a biscuit, it's it's these like pancake it's discs pancake. that have like these little holes in them that are filled with syrup. Jesus Christ. It's yeah. Oh, it's I think so it's fucking it, good. the way I've seen it because I've I've seen one that was like not fully like defrosted, which was a, <laughs> sounds a appetizing. It was a nightmare. Oh, yeah. uh, it's like it's like not you know it's fake maple syrup, so it's just pieces. It's like chunks of brown sugar, and then oh. it just when they microwave, because oh. of course they microwave it, but it like it like seeps into the fluffy pancake bread and it's, it's pretty delicious with like the savory stuff like you get it with the sausage which is normally how i got it and it's it, it's got a little spice in the sausage because it's a breakfast sausage and mm-hmm. it all just like you know that perfect bite it's supposed to have like fat salt and a little bit of heat and yeah. like the the acid that's it and except it, it doesn't for, really have the acid <laughs> for a second when you said maple syrup i thought you said nipple syrup <laughs> and I was god like, imagine okay imagine if a woman syrup woman had one tit that gave out milk and the other one gave out syrup and then she was like the breakfast queen <laughs> just do some aged cheese I, with what, <laughs> aged breast milk guarantee cheese. you there are videos of that <laughs> I, I, there's we're a kink on. video yeah we're yeah. off to a great start yeah there uh, must be a kink of women secreting various substances from their nipples oh, right? oh yeah brian oh yeah i mean not, not just milk uh, I, that's you know what, what i'm saying not not just milk other stuff what do you mean? Because there's, I'm, I know there's a lactation kink. Yeah, that's, we know. That's yeah. obvious. Mm-hmm. But what about other stuff? Like, you know, not not actually doing it, but you know, computer, <laughs> like, what, what, what are you like, imagining? Like, like, like diet Jello? Pepsi? Like, like sy- yeah, diet Pepsi would be a good one, I'm sure. Syrup, as we discussed. Yeah. Um, hot sauce. Hot sauce would be crazy. Yeah, I, I, okay. I guess if you could choose, this goes for everybody in this room. If you could choose to lactate a specific <laughs> liquid, oh. what would be most useful to your life? Useful, useful? water. <laughs> yeah, let's say it can't uh-huh. okay, hydration titties. Let's say <laughs> it has to be a pureed food substance. Oh, a pureed food substance. Yes. Yeah, so, like, not a liquid. Something that's not normally a liquid. Oh. uh it, it's that like, like it would hurt. Yeah, I'm sure it would. I'm like clutching my tit right now. <laughs> um tomato soup does Ooh. that count i mean it's normally a liquid but it is, yes right, no it, you know what that, that's fine it's like it'd be like the concentrate soup. that you get in the can yeah you have to add water <laughs> oh it would okay. burn too because the acid you know what like um garlic paste <gasps> that's a really good answer yeah. yeah that would be yeah. very useful but then it takes out like i love to chop garlic like that's my favorite thing in the world you chop that garlic you get a little bit of butter in a pan <sighs> you throw that garlic in there it's oh, the best your entire you know what? place se- smells good i think i would choose which is not a food so maybe i'm missing the whole point is shampoo and conditioner because <gasps> think of so how smart. great that would be in the shower yeah yeah right? wow that is like really convenient yeah i don't i feel like i don't go through shampoo and conditioner like fast enough like i get the big thing and then that lasts me yeah. forever yeah same um but yeah i guess i guess with coronavirus and i'm staying home it's like garlic sure <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna change my my answer that also breaks all the rules we just set forth great. i want butter just butter. just oh. butter, and it, it can be solid butter. Like it, it, I don't give. I, don't I give mean, a that's pretty close to milk. Yeah, it, you, it's like wait. If you had okay, so if you jumped up and down enough while you were breastfeeding, could you make butter inside of your titties? <laughs> As a doctor, <laughs> welcome I to late night. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the reason the live show is canceled yeah. because of conversations like this. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, like, nobody needs so that in their life. We should say that up front. Uh, we canceled our March twenty third live show because of public health reasons. We don't yeah. want people to gather uh, in large groups. We we figured anything we can do to contribute to people canceling stuff. Uh, we wanted to do it. We don't, we don't want to get sick. We don't want anyone to get sick. So, Especially uh, not at our show. And uh, so instead, what we're going to be doing is uh, same show, but a live stream, uh, which I think is a, a general like upswing. Like that's a good thing because like there's so many people who live across the country or across the world who want to come to the shows and can't. Yep. And selling tickets to live shows in Los Angeles is like fucking impossible. <laughs> it's very hard. We've been very lucky to have a, a bunch of people come so far. And there were definitely yep. people coming to this one, too. Um, anyway, so we have a special guest with us today that you've you've already heard talk about uh, lactation. <laughs> how, how would you like to be introduced? 
We, I, we should have asked you this before. I don't know. I don't. I genuinely don't. Uh, Nut boy. Uh, yeah. You, no, you can just. Call you know me what? Allie. I'm going to propose a new tradition. We uh-huh. make all the guests introduce themselves. That's good. Yeah. Because I feel like it's less work for us. Yeah, that's probably. I best. hate doing work. Yeah. yeah all right. you guys, oh. Mr. Okay. Guest, introduce yourself. Um, my name is Allie. I'm a gamer. Uh, my job is I am a creative producer at Game Grumps, but I would probably just call myself in general an artist. <laughs> I don't great. Know. Yeah, I you're go very, by Nut Boy online. You're you're a very talented illustrator. <laughs> Thank you. You draw great girls with titties. I do love drawing titties. That's don't we if, all? If you couldn't tell by the amount of titty talk we started, that's this the one. episode title. Titty talk. Titty, titty talk. talk. Yes. Uh, I so wish we could have named the last episode. You can't fuck death. <laughs> Yeah, the distant ancient blowjobs is a <sighs> close second, oh, and, and that in fact good. was the one I uploaded it under yeah. before it went public, and then changed it. <sighs> you, you always have a working title. Uh, and then not, you have the public title, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Often our, we're too lazy to change the working title, so <laughs> yeah. it just becomes the working, uh, the public title. That, that's enough. always the perils of doing a creative project. If you do something as a placeholder, you have to be okay with it ending up in the final product. That's right. It's true. It's like you name a character and then suddenly you don't have any idea what a better name would be because you're just so used to it. And you're like, well, that's them now. Listen, we named the cool youth pastor and his wife and dream daddy, Joseph Christensen and his wife, Mary. <laughs> and that's what stayed. And that's what stayed. And their children are named Christian, Chris, Christian, Krish. Oh my God. It could have been worse. It could have been named Jesus McGodness. I don't know. I that is worse. Terrible. Yep, I agree wait, that's worse. Wait, that, <laughs> that's the title worse. of the episode, Jesus, Jesus McGodness. McGodness. <laughs> Uh, I do think, though, there is something to be said for that first instinct not being overthought and then actually being pretty great. Yeah. So a lot of times you, you know, there's this famous story about Chopin where uh, he would write these pieces and mm-hmm. these crazy elaborate things. And then he'd spend months like tweaking them and eventually just come back to the first thing he did. And, you know, sometimes your first artistic impulse is true. the way it should yeah. have been from the start. I, yeah. was. We ruin ourselves for all future creative projects because we had the name Dream Daddy literally immediately. Like, that was one of the first things that we were like, oh, what would you even call a game like that? Uh, Dream Daddy. Okay, that's it. And now every subsequent project I've worked on, like, coming up with a name is like, Oh, it's hell. so hard. Mm-hmm. It's the worst. Because, like, when you guys were naming Starbomb, didn't you do each do, like, documents where you... Um... Yes, I sent... We, we went back and forth. I sent... I think Dan's talked about this on Grumps, but a list of like 60 or maybe even 100 really, really terrible names. It was just brain dump of like the first shit that popped into my head. Mm -hmm. The one that I remember, because it would have been a terrible name for the project, but I liked it a lot, was Placentimeter. (laughs) (laughs) That rips. Uh, Uh, But not, not a good name for what became a comedy rap band about video games. Yeah. Yeah. Placentimeter. Yeah. Uh, the the one that we almost went with was, and we actually to the extent where we agreed on it and then decided we didn't like it as much was a phrase I had heard in physics, which was the intensity frontier, which was <laughs> which a, is a yeah, what it is was that? it was describing how like different things you can probe with particle accelerators, so there are different things you can you can ramp up. So one thing you can choose to try to explore is intensity which is a physical concept and so some particle accelerators are probing the intensity frontier and some are probing like i forgot the other ones the energy frontier the luminosity frontier something like that but i thought the intensity frontier was a great name for a band is the luminosity frontier sexy do you think because i feel like probing is like like you could make personas of all these sexy frontiers Mm -hmm. and then Mm. you're probing them (laughs) Yeah, this sounds like it, that makes it sound like a prog rock band that yes. it, like Ooh, it, it, yeah. some, anything's like airbrushed on the side of a van. Yeah, and it's so, all nude ladies that are green and blue and yeah, and yeah. they have the flowing hair and then yeah. there's like a dragon. Um, why don't you guys have an official NSP like spray painted van yet? I don't know. <gasps> we really saying. should. Yeah. yeah, it has to be airbrushed like like a like a carnival ride. Totally. Like, yes. totally. Oh my god, yeah, I that love, would be rad. I love yeah, when you're riding to a, a dragon. Yeah. 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 I love when you go to a traveling carnival and they have all the bootleg like drawings of like yeah. it's it's SpongeBob yeah and D- Dorob the we, the explorer. We did think we've thought about doing stuff like that. So you, when you tour, you can what they call wrap the bus right right where you put the logo over the band and mm-hmm. stuff yeah on it. with the vinyl. Uh, but then we were like, wait, do we really want people finding us that easily? It's true. You don't and really want to be hunted down. It's yeah, and it, it, that's not to say like you know it would be a huge problem necessarily, but. There's some degree of anonymity that people, you want people when you're be on weird. Tour. People, yeah. Two buses, 
It's like Padme Almodala. Oh, yes, <laughs> great. Two buses. Decoy. One one is just a regular bus, and then the other With one Natalie has Natalie Portman the, in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. one is the actual uh, NSP decal, and you guys are not in that bus. And, the, yeah. and you should totally actually put Natalie Portman on it, and then people would be like, wow, this is Natalie Portman's personal van. <laughs> I guess right. she's really into prog rock. Yeah. That's a really good front, though. You, you, you make the art like NSP themed. It's you and Dan on a, on a dragon or a unicorn. And then the instead of putting Ninja Sex Party on it, you put this is Natalie Portman's van, mm-hmm. just like I'm sure written she'd out. Love that, yeah. <laughs> Come check her out, and then that's it. Then it's more like a traveling nightmare carnival. Traveling, <laughs> traveling that's nightmare a, carnival. Yeah, like you know they that's a the good whole... band name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that that's very like steampunk. Uh, what is it? A steam powered giraffe? Yeah, or early what is pa- that? early Panic at the Disco. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's uh, God, I, I maintain. Um, uh, Fever You Can't Sweat Out is a great album. <laughs> I love it. I don't know I, it that well. It, it's front to back bangers. I mean, it, it was is. when they were, it's their first album when they were like teenagers and it's just super steampunky, like that early 2000s Fall Out Boy style, yes. like uh, long titles. super long titles. Like there's a reason these tables are numbered, honey. You just haven't figured it out yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're all sassy. Yeah. That's the thing too. They're all they're like yeah. weirdly condescending, but like yeah. for fun. You know, it's like, here's a song about like poisoning your ex at a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yep it's it's really delightful and then they did like a weird twee dad rock album so this is like mid 2000s or yeah. early yeah. yeah totally and then mm-hmm. they got get into the poppier stuff we're talking and... panic at the disco yes. yes. okay mm-hmm. yeah and now they just do w- w- nine, <laughs> nine, nine in the afternoon is which era of oh, panic at the late. disco uh super late that, uh, that, that, isn't, their... isn't that like the dad rock album? yeah they were was trying like that 10 was years the... ago ish that song sucks yeah right? no it's that was their like that was like when they were like we're gonna see we're gonna explore the beatles yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. And that yeah. was like that was the vibe that was that they were going for, and everyone was like, "God, we don't even like the Beatles." If we were listening, but to that was album. a huge hit. It, it was yeah, yeah. big because it was catchy, but I don't know if it was like I, think I listened to it. But you I know didn't what, I love it. I don't like that album. I don't really like that era. I love, uh, you know, sort of like the newer one. What's the one where it's like him in a pool and there's drawings on it? Uh, uh, I, I'm it's on the t- tip of my tongue. It's it's, it's the uh, one that has like a, a fuck whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Google, no, Google. Nobody cares. It, it's it's. I really like that era, but I appreciate musicians who will like just try different shit. Like yeah. You, oh yeah. Your radio heads and such. What what are some um, bands that y'all like who have like kind of drastically changed throughout uh, their careers? Beck is a big one. Mm, Ooh Beck, yeah. Beck tries yeah. a lot of different stuff. Like you have, uh, you know, the the early like the loser era Beck, which is just yeah. kind of like a middle finger at everybody. And then uh, my favorite Beck album is Midnight Vultures, mm-hmm. which is just bananas and weird and fun and funky uh and then i also really love sea change which i think he was going through some kind of relationship a romantic crisis Mm -hmm. at the time and it's just this really uh slow beautiful sad album Mm -hmm. and like uh, he he's a very very talented musician and one of the best shows i've ever seen actually was him live Mm -hmm. and i'm by no means like a beck super fan Mm -hmm. I, I, i do like him a lot though um probably in about 2003 or so I saw him perform in at UC San Diego Mm -hmm. where he, it was just him in a relatively small auditorium and the stage was just littered with instruments and he would walk around and pick one up and start playing it and then sing something. Uh, he had Smokey Hormel come out on the guitar. It was a really, really great show. And that was after like the sadder kind Mm, of stuff. What what about you, Allie? Um, I don't know if this necessarily feels like that drastic of a change, but it took me a long time to listen to the Nationals new album. Um, Ooh, I am yeah. easy to find and they incorporated a ton of female vocalists into like every track and it's super strange and I was like not sure if I was into it, but now I'm obsessed with it. Mm-hmm. It was just like whenever you listen to a new album and you have that moment where you're like, I'm not sure if I'm into this. And then you f- it, you fall in love harder than you would if it was like what you expected. You, you got to give it like two to three listens yeah. before you're like, oh, okay, I'm super into this. Yeah, I always find, especially with music in general, I'm not like a music head. I feel like I'm pretty private usually about what music I like. Um, but Secret. I always, I, I, yeah, I, I, mostly because I don't like talking about music discourse. Like I'm not like a pitchfork person, reading person. Like I don't really want to read reviews. I just like to listen to music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, if you think about it, like the best way to consume mm-hmm. music is to listen yeah, to it. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Like, well, if you really think well, about you it. You know, there's the two parts of it. Like, there's the, you want to listen to it and then discuss it. And then to me, I've always just been like, I just want to keep this in my soul. Like, I don't want to, I don't yeah, yeah. really necessarily want to bring it up. But, um, God, where was I going? I think, I feel like one of the one of the musicians that i don't necessarily like for obvious reasons but i respect how much change their music Ooh. has been through is Kanye oh. West okay yes um mm. he i don't know i know the lore of all these all his songs and stuff because my boyfriend really loves him 
and despite despite everything which is i feel like kind of an honorable thing in some ways to like understand like a person can be a nightmare and like be like still just look for the artistic integrity we in contain their multitudes yeah exactly you can appreciate art and uh-huh. also you know, exactly. acknowledge the person who made it as a shitter and engage with it critically because if you just ignore it or cut it out entirely you have stopped engaging with it critically yeah, yeah. yeah. some of those kanye albums are fucking awesome yeah. my yeah. beautiful dark mm-hmm. twisted fantasy is, is one of my favorite albums of it's all time incredible it's the best um he recently dropped an album that was okay but the reason he dropped it was because was that the Jesus yeah one? the one what was bef- it called Jesus, Jesus is King Jesus is King uh, what was before that was a different album that got leaked and it, the album before Jesus is King oh I was remember that yeah incredibly good and unfortunately because of the type of person Kanye is he scrapped the whole thing and mm-hmm. that's why we got Jesus is King instead and it was so it, like to me that's devastating is like I understand that like I feel that like I really feel like the like nope never mind you guys like stole this from me essentially like i'm not giving this to you so the only way you can listen to it is like leaks on youtube and it's so sad because you seeing a person's artistic style change because they were harmed by their audience yeah. is like is that the, sucks. the pablo one or no no it was between pablo i forgot okay. the name of it um uh but it in between uh pablo and jesus is because pablo was the exclusively untitled Yes, One, right. it, was, it was like a. I mean, which worked out great for everybody. For yeah, you know, I'm sure they made their money. Yeah. from the like 20 people that were only <laughs> going to go on title, and the rest pirated it. Um, but it was it was a collab with Future, oh, okay. I think. Oh really? And the oh, second cool. one, and it kind of sucks because like I feel like you know Future like probably worked. If it wasn't Future, I'm gonna feel like an idiot right now. I mostly just listen to this stuff. I don't know all the names. Um, but yeah, he collabed with him on this album, and then Kanye scrapped it, and so Future has had any like bangers oh, <laughs> since like the last time they collabed it's a bummer it's just it's a rough you can see i you can see the struggle of being an artist really hard with those guys i, I feel that i love it when bands do like the hard left on the second oh, album yeah. like oh, they yeah. hit first album and then mgmt did this right mm-hmm. like oh, uh, yeah. a huge hit first album and then completely changed tack on their second one and then everyone mm-hmm. it's almost the same thing with all these popular yeah. bands it's they have the second album. Everyone's like, I fucking hate it. And then ten years later, everyone's like, that's their best album. It's a actually, mm-hmm. yeah, I like MGMT. I think another artist that changed a lot that I really like is um, Marina and the Diamonds. Mm-hmm. Now, who's just Marina? Oh, I don't know them at all. Uh, it was a big like if you were if you were on Tumblr in 2012. Yep. It was Arctic Monkeys and Marina and the Diamonds. And so early on, she did these concept albums that were like about these archetypes of women. So she had Electra Heart. Oh, that's which, cool. Yeah, they're so so good mm-hmm. and like incisive about femininity and like all this stuff. Like um. Um, the Family Jewels was yes. first, and then there was Electra Heart, and now she's rebranded as Marina, and her stuff is, like, really beautiful and so mature um, mm-hmm. because her early albums were very, like, embodying these archetypes, like mm. uh, How to Be a Heartbreaker, Bubblegum Bitch, like, Homewrecker. Mm-hmm. They yeah. were all very Jezebelian yeah, type stuff. Yeah, like, Being the Other Woman, and mm-hmm. her music videos oh, cool. are just fantastic, and it was super, like, bubblegum pop, super upbeat, and now it's just, like, beautiful like ballads because she i truly think she has one of the most beautiful mm-hmm. uh, like ranged voices right now mm-hmm. she's is she welsh i think so yes yeah because her real name is like marina diamandis I yeah don't know how you would yeah say it cool. in it the actual, but it, like it's a greek name yeah right? it's like yes, full yeah. it looks it looks like a, a insect or plant name or something. yeah mm-hmm. she she's wonderful and she's just like the most beautiful woman in the world she's gorgeous mm. it's true um, uh, uh, should we move on to giving some advice? Yeah, we should. So we asked on Twitter. Uh, we wanted you guys to send us emails uh, for advice on situations with your friends. This one comes from Maitland, uh, pronouns she, her. Ma- Maitland is 15 years old and says, I'm really confused and need your help. I have severe depression, anxiety, and PTSD. Because of this, I prefer to keep my emotions and thoughts to myself. It honestly helps a lot to keep things to myself. I am a dropout, so I don't get to see my friends very often. I often try to talk to my friends, but I feel like I'm being pushed away. For example, I really want to play D&D one day, but I don't know how. My best friend, I'll call her Sam, knows uh, knows how and often does campaigns with our other friends. I've asked her multiple times if I could do a campaign with them, but whenever I do, she always says, sure, and never mentions it again. I really don't want to lose my friends. The only two people I talk to nowadays is my very good friend who's 24 and like a mom to me and her boyfriend who is like a dad to me. What should I do? So w- w- the... This is a rough situation. Yeah. The, the D&D thing is, can, tell me again. So she keeps, she wants to play D&D with them, but mm-hmm. every time she yeah. asks, they the friend just kind of brushes it off. Is that, am I yeah. remembering that right? Yeah, she always says sure and never mentions it again. My read on this, because this is, 
Uh, mm-hmm. The thing that I run into a lot with friends is you can say, hey, let's hang out soon. And then it just kind of gets continually punted because everybody oh, ever yeah. gets about yeah. it. And everyone's mm-hmm. busy. And- yeah. I mean, what, what I've learned in the past year is just if I'm like, hey, let's hang out, I'm just going to say a date and time and then yes. work around it. Because if you don't make the plan, you're going to forget. Mm-hmm. And I think if you were like, hey, I really want to do this. If you're okay with me coming into this, uh, let's let's actually do it. And then if not, that kind of sucks. But I don't know. Uh, that person should just be honest with you. In most cases, you know, everyone, at least most kind people, think the same thing, which is like, oh, they don't like me. You know, they, you, you sort of put it on yourself. Yeah. It's not that. It, they're just, mm-hmm. this person is 99% likely to just kind of be busy and forget about it. Yes. And they probably think occasionally, oh, shit, you know, I should have invited Maitland to this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and there's there's totally a thing where I see a lot of people online talk about how they feel really bummed because they're like, nobody ever texts me first. And it's like, <sighs> come on, it's a two-way street. It's a two-way street, baby. Yeah. You got to start doing that. If you think of somebody and just, just it's, text them hello, like, hey, what's going on with you? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. it's everybody likes to talk about themselves. And if you just start with like, hey, I was thinking about you, what's going on? Um, it's it's really easy to open up that conversation. And yeah. Yeah. Well, I think some of the issues this person is dealing with too, like affect their perception of these situations, which is how I feel mm-hmm. about my like anxieties and stuff. So it's like, mm-hmm. yes, you, your friend says, yes, I want to play D and D with you. But since no one is stepping forward and volunteering the responsibility of creating the plan, you read it, internalize it as, Oh, they said yes, but they secretly don't want that. Yeah. So you're right. constantly That's second exactly guessing. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you're constantly just assuming like everyone's lying to you essentially, which yeah. I, I definitely feel all the time. And it's no, it's unfortunately, despite depression and all the things that make us not want to do things you do, if you want something, you have to go for it. Even if it means being like asserting yourself and being like, you said, yes, how about we do it on this day? And then again, like Layton said, if they're actually not into it, then they should have been honest with you. And that is its own issue, but at least you found that out. So it's kind of a bit more. And then you know that you don't have to waste energy on it. Yeah. You don't have to keep wondering because the worst thing when you have any of these issues is the uncertainty. And That's right. You can only because stop you, it. you just start spinning the wheels in your exactly. head and overthinking it. And then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where if you think everybody yes. hates you, you're going to start being like weird or standoffish yes. or like overly ingratiating. Like uh, Maitland mentioning having like PTSD and anxiety and stuff mm-hmm. like big mood, same. Uh, it, it makes it where you just like it, it tanks your self worth so much yeah. in a way that's really frustrating. And I'd love to recommend uh, to Maitland and anybody else listening uh, reading "The Body Keeps the Score," which is like the book on PTSD, and it talks about mm-hmm. how it literally changes your brain, how you somaticize it, and just like it's such a useful and comforting book. And you know, I don't know what you have PTSD from. I'm not going to pry. Uh, but another book that I recommend to everybody is adult children of emotionally immature parents. Like yes. that's required reading. It's so short and it, it really, puts, which is almost everybody. Yeah. Yes. Who's an adult. To, yeah. to some degree or another, but it also, it tells you about yourself, but also people, you know, cause it kind of breaks down the like internalizers versus externalizers. But like with my own PTSD, it like really helped reading that. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I I hope that advice helps you, Maitland. And I do think the, the, I mean, you were talking about your older friends. There's about a 10 year age gap between you and your closest Mm -hmm. friends at that. that, That's great. And of course that's, you know, it's great to have friends of of all ages. Um, It's true. It, I think it is important to try to get friends closer to your age at 15. Mm-hmm. Like For sure. Like 24, 25, if they went to college, they're, they're probably out of that by mm-hmm. now. That's a really, really significant gap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of a cliche at this point. And I recognize that this might be something that you're incapable of doing because of anxiety and, and other reasons. But, you know, it's it's all about shared interests, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's why I, I love the idea of, of doing the, the D&D campaign. That's such a great sort of low stakes way of meeting yeah. people. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there'll be a wide, hopefully a bunch of people there who are all kind of into the same stuff. Mm-hmm. Like you can get there, mm-hmm. talk as much or as little as, as you want be part of the campaign, which forces you to interact at least uh, a yeah. little bit, yeah, which I understand definitely. can be stressful. But trying to find things like low stress environments, including online, by yeah. the way, mm-hmm. right, which is important, uh, where you can interact with people who are your age and will have a perspective that's probably more valuable to you than yeah. someone yeah. who's older, I think is important. Yeah, because you can totally learn and take cues from like, I'm not sure if you've asked your older friends uh, for advice on the same issue, because I think this is a thing that everybody goes through at one point or another. 
Um, but yeah, getting people close to your own age, especially like being 15, I feel like one of my biggest regrets was being so like academically focused and not being social and not spending time with friends. Cause it's totally, it's so frustrating when you're a teen or you're younger and older people are like, it, not these are the best years of your life because this is a lie, but like you truly don't understand the level of responsibility you're thrust into once you're in college and stuff. And like high school is the last period where it's like you don't have to fully worry about it yet. Mm -hmm. um, and just like enjoying that and spending time with people you care about, I think is the most important thing. But, you know, maybe find if the D&D &D thing doesn't work out or even if it does, like find a club, find a meetup, mm -hmm. maybe yep. like Go to the D and D store. I mean, or the, the, the D and D, &D, &D store, store. Uh, the, the, a card, a trading card store, or a nerd store totally. of any kind. Because there's the the guild house near where I live, and like you just go in. Like there are people there doing sessions. Like it's like the library, but for more, nerds. even more nerds. So, yeah, totally. to a new, new level. When I was thirteen, oh boy, I followed oh that advice. Uh -huh. <laughs> I went to the Gamers Attic. Oh my god. Our local role-playing store in Pompton Lakes, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no longer there. What a shock. Mm. Uh, and Because a, a friend of mine played D&D, &D, just some very generic type D&D mm -hmm. stuff there. And I was, I had, <laughs> I had all the AD&D second edition books and read them, but had never played a game mm -hmm. of D&D. So I knew technically how, but I'd never done it in person because I was too afraid. Mm -hmm. um, and so I showed up at this game store with my almost neighbor friend who was rough, same age basically. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, you'll love it. And they started playing and about 10, let's say 10, 15 minutes into the game, the, you know, our party encountered some kind of monster. And one of the kids playing D and D said, I grabbed the monster's dick <laughs> and I cut it off with my sword. <laughs> and I got so upset that I walked out. Oh my God. And walked home. Because I was like, I can't handle this. This is just too much for me on every level. <laughs> it's true. You are at the mercy of the people you play with in their uh, yeah. creative style. That, yeah. that chaotic And now energy. look at you. Uh, yeah, now yeah. look at me. Uh, yeah, you appear to your younger self in a vision and be like, accept the dark side. Did you do the thing? We're so off base on this. I, I think we can consider well, this email done. I'm yeah, now yeah, digressing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm assuming everyone does this where in your, let's say, junior high school, uh, notebooks you write notes to your future self so that yeah. when time travel Ooh, yeah. is invented mm -hmm. so i would be like okay show up at you know 11 03 a.m <laughs> outside uh mr noble's english class and then i'd wait a minute until it was 11 03 and look at the door <sighs> and if i didn't show up i was like all right Time travel is not invented in my lifetime. I used to do weird things like that. Yeah. It was mostly, yeah. I grew up, I was like perfectly timed in the Harry Potter era. So when I didn't get my Hogwarts, Hogwarts letter, I like acted up for like a few months. I was like really angry about it. And then there was like, I was really scared of aliens. So I would always, Word. I would, I would like always like, you know, see the little, uh, little or whatever they are, the dead skin cells in your eyes. And I'd be like. Oh my god, aliens all the time, and yeah. then I would do things like close my eyes until you see all the like spots, yep, yep, until, yep. and then oh, be yeah. like, "I'm defending myself. It's fine." And then I'd open wow. my eyes and I'd be like, "It's cool." Wait, it was wait. like weird ritual. Dead skin cells in your eyes? Is that what they are, about? Brian? I feel like you'd know this better. Well, I don't when even you look know what up and you about. see the clear dots in in on like the, the surface. after images. No, the on the surface of your eye, you see like a little like a little divot, like and they like slide off, and they are supposedly dead skin cells. But I think that was like actually something I else. I don't recall ever seeing that. Do you, yeah. do you know like what tiny. she's talking about? No. Uh, when you have you ever looked up at the sky and you can see like on the film of the surface of your eye, like the slight like a slight texture like a dot or like oh like, a, like a, a lens flare kind no, of thing no like literally it's like on your eye wait why is it this is the first time i've ever had this conversation and no one is like yeah i know exactly what you're i have no about. idea what you're talking everyone about. Um, i have tweet so us. much yeah. eye stuff going on. i have <laughs> terrible vision i'm constantly <laughs> well, it's, it's aware right, of what's going on with my eyes it's on your eye so it's not like if you have bad vision it's like you on your cornea it. yeah it's like on your cornea it, um and you can sometimes see like jory definitely i've talked to him about this but it, it, you'll see the he calls them the wigglers which is like <laughs> a little it's a little like it's a little clear worm that's on your eye i mean it's not literally okay I, I, i've seen those but yeah there are i mean there's like there's two kinds of things two sort of eye things i'm uh -huh. gonna run them by you because yeah, i yeah, think neither is what you're talking yeah, about yeah probably because there's the totally like wrong. uh you stand up too fast and you see the like the metallic no, floater that's, that's different things right that's a different thing mm -hmm. and then there's something that i've started experiencing recently which uh -oh. is something that comes with age okay where you get basically uh little imperfections in your vitreous 
uh, into the vitriol fluid. Mm -hmm. And they, you can, so I have this thing now that floats around my left eye, which looks like a small snake and it's dark and it is always floating in my field of vision. Yeah. And it's just, it's in the fluid. It's just there. Huh. Um, And it has to do. It's kind of like that. Basically as, something I learned is as you get older, uh, everyone has this eventually. I think, I'm not an eye doctor, so don't quote me on this, (laughs) but I think most people, if not everybody has this eventually, you're uh, vitriol fluid mm-hmm. detaches from your retina a little bit. Uh, they call it a posterior vitriol detachment, right. which I have partially in one of my eyes. Uh, and it's not a big deal. It's okay. just like a normal aging thing. Uh-huh. But sometimes when that happens, like the fluid will get, I think it's air pockets or other imperfections in it. And then they're just kind of flying around your uh, your eye. That's so, so interesting. Yeah. Well, maybe it is related to that because the thing, because people are always like, it's a dead skin or it's a dead eye cell or yeah. something, but I, I'm 99% sure it wasn't that. So it's probably related. But the things that float around are like clear. Like you just see the like shadow. They're there. Like you see, you see the outline, like the highlight and the shadow yeah. of the edge of the I have like, a couple of those, circle. but they're definitely in the eye fluid, so not on the surface of the eye. That's so weird. Yeah. So cool. Have either of you uh, ever scratched your eye? Like cornea? No. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I have not. It severely. usually doesn't itch. I, I mean, I always no, scratch my sorry. eyes if we're talking about actually scratching them. Uh, I get, I, I get eye I believe that's the only time I've ever said something that you've given me that exact reaction. <laughs> that was a dad joke, everybody. Yeah. Um, no, I've never. Have you scratched your cornea? No, I haven't. I just have known people who have gotten like paper Oof. cuts in yeah. their eyes. And paper stuff. cuts in their <laughs> eyes? Yeah. No. What? Yeah. It hurts my eyes. How? Like, I've, I've known paper multiple cut people in your who have gotten paper cuts. Oh. I think the one, it was like my. What? When I was a kid, it was my friend's mother because she had like a four year old and she was oh, reading no. a book and oh, she was like, Of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it scratched the cornea. And then you meet kids. people who have like the burst, ver- uh, yeah, the burst blood vessels in their eyes yeah. too, where it just like goes totally red, which is yeah, dope. That's it's awesome. so cool. It's so fucking great. It used to happen to me all the time. I don't know why, but I like got older and I stopped blowing up my eye blood vessels. Or, or you Weird. get pink eye, which is a fucking nightmare. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that uh, I, I used to like, I have really bad eye allergies, so I used to like give myself pink eye because I would just like scrape the skin off of the like rims of my eyes from like while I was sleeping, rubbing my eyes. I don't know. No doctor could figure out why, but I like I had to get like my eyes were like chapped um, last like the last year or the year before from like how bad I was like just scraping oh my the skin off of my eyelids. It was horrifying. Fuck. God, it was like hate... steroids in my eyes. It was like weird. I hate having a body. I know. It sucks. It's like yeah. fuck, fuck the flesh prison. Fuck yeah, the meat no. Gundam. I don't want it. I want to astral Mm-mm. project into space. Have you ever gotten your eye pressure taken? I do all the time. When I go in for with, eye checkups, they with, do. With a pen instead of the air? Uh, they have a little thing that they, you know, they numb the Yeah, they numb. Yeah, exactly. What, what the, the fuck are you guys you talking about? So as a, as a tip, you know, it's like taking your the basic eye stats so when mm-hmm. i go in I, I have terrible vision i'm like minus 15 in both <laughs> are eyes. you wearing contacts i am okay. I, 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 if i wasn't wearing any kind of contacts or glasses i would be actually blind like mm-hmm. I, I can't see anything. <laughs> uh so when i go in to get my uh retinas checked mm-hmm. which i do once a year uh they take the you know they numb it they put mm-hmm. the numbing drop in eye and drops. then they take a little pen or and something and they all and you don't really feel it but you do see the warping of the cornea. Yeah, you can you can feel the vision, like the area around it, like just kind of like boom. Yeah, it's, it's fucking. I don't want to talk about eye stuff anymore. My <laughs> okay. eyes are like hurting. It's kind of cool. Like, well, I'm I'm also the person. Like, once I'm numbed, I'm like just like start cutting me open. Like, I want to see weird stuff. I wanted to hold a mirror up when they were taking my wisdom teeth out because oh, I was yeah. just. They were like, "You want to be put to sleep?" I was like, "No, let me watch." Whoa. And uh, and also while I was doing it, the numbing started wearing off. So I had to be like, oh, yeah, get back in there. Like, this this, this is right here in this spot. And I was, like, totally cool with the pain. It was weird. Oh, God. I mean, it was, like, slow. It was gradual. Um, But, like, eye stuff like that, I'm, like, both frightened by it because I don't want to be in – I don't want to be in pain. It's very cursed. But the grossness, I'm, like, super into. I'm, like, I want to see just, like – I want to. I want to know how weird it is. Like I'm totally into getting LASIK, even though I have no. Oh, have you ever watched a video of the LASIK procedure? It's crazy. Yes, it's pretty bananas. <laughs> it's dope. I look at weird surgery videos. I all mean, the time. me too. I I'm gonna have to get a functional. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. To fix my nose so I can breathe. But like, mm-hmm. I'm totally gonna be like, take pictures of yes, my face yes, when yes. it's cut open because yes. that's badass. Because I have to cut the nose off entirely, right? It, and it's then like they, they cut it. the bottom and they peel it back. That's so crazy. Fuck. It's yeah, I want those pics. <laughs> right, let's let's move on to another yes, email. Yeah. All right. Buy a bunch of cans of spam. 
I I was thinking about making spam, spam fried rolls. rice. Spam rolls. For a while, I went through a, a phase about six months ago when uh-huh. I was just making spam masubi for Hell every yeah. breakfast. It's the fucking best. It's the, best. It's the perfect it's like, snack. It's so yeah. easy, too. We it's got easy. one of those little uh, masubi rice molds. Yeah, it's, it, uh, it, yeah, when you have the mold, it's like the most satisfying little thing to press it in and like, yeah. or like fold it in the plastic wrap. I love it. I used to do it with um, a slice of craft. Craft single, yeah. which are amazing. I I turn around on craft singles and I turn oh, around yeah. on spam. But like a little bit of fried egg in there, so you get that ooh, yeah. that nice over Brecky medium spam. Not a American cheese person, so it's I it's it's a con- it's like a it. contextual thing. And I, there's circumstances you don't have to love it. where it's good. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to love it. I, I don't. It's the same thing with mayonnaise, which I I. I, yeah. I, I'm like I get what, it. Now? What, I know right some now? people, now, Brian. I'm. I, I, some now people, you have my attention. So, some people, Brian, don't like mayonnaise. I don't know if you've heard that. Oh, I, I, I'm in a band <laughs> with one of them, basically. <laughs> the number one mayonnaise hater. Oh God. Um, Commander Meowch hates mayonnaise. I just. Yeah. I, I think mayonnaise is the greatest. I think it's. I, genius. I've, I've turned around on it too because it's, it's like great. conceptually and in a large quantity, I don't want to eat a spoonful of it. No. But it's like it makes everything so much better. Like dip it, do it, doing it the French way and dipping French fries Dude, in mayo with a little bit of yes, lemon juice. Absolutely Ooh. the best. Like I, I, now mayo is my preferred uh, French fry condiment. Wait, by w- would a you mile. would you change it to mayo lactation? Ooh, wow! Get a little aioli going. Oh, oh. You know that is <laughs> tempting. Titty. I have to be honest, that is tempting. I, uh, if I had to do two, I just feel like the shampoo conditioner one is just m- much more convenient. What about? I don't eat mayo every day, but I do mm, wash my hair pretty much every day. day. Yeah. One for each tit. You got two yeah. nipples. You for know what reason. I could do? One for mayo and one for combo shampoo conditioner. Well, that, yeah, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> three, what and, three and one. Yes. Yeah, three Great. And one. Okay. Yeah, God, let's do I have, that. I have met too many men. Uh, there was uh, a guy I was seeing who was like, "God, I'm so sick of breaking out. Like, I don't understand why this is happening." And I was like. That what kind of skincare do you do? And he was like, oh, I wash my face with three-in-one shampoo conditioner. Uh, like, uh, I, how do you get like this? It's like men do not take baths <laughs> or know what bath bombs are, which is a tragedy, and they don't take care of their skin and then don't understand why they're breaking out. Men don't take care of their bodies basically at all. No, they don't it's frightening. shave either. Uh, a thing that I learned recently is the movie American Psycho kicked off skincare for a lot of men Good. because they watch him peel his fucking yeah, 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 skin yeah. off and be a. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a fascinating little tidbit to me. God, American Psycho is such a great movie. Favorite, great movie. favorite line from that movie: "Feed me the cat." <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, it's every time I see that ATM say "Feed me the cat," I get happy. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's good. It's so funny because that delightly. book is <laughs> delightly. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's not, it's funny because that book is insufferable. Oh my god, yeah. You, I was I was about to delight. ask. The book, I mean Brett Easton Ellis he is get fucked. So annoying. He's the um, worst. And that book is like fucking abysmal. It is. But the movie, I mean, and it's directed by a woman, which yes, I it think is. is like why yes, it's good. For sure. Question mark. Um, Mar- Mary Heron? Yeah. Right? Uh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. God, what a fabulous film. It's just like peak perfect like 80s 90s like that just like like minimalistic but blood everywhere and also yeah. you love business cards that much i guess <laughs> it's like yes there are so many great edits of the like what do you think scene there's one with mechanical keyboards of like yes. a bunch of programmers there's one where it's like anime forum signatures yes that was my favorite <laughs> one i was really literally we're gonna, did was you so did you see the thing uh when I think it was when Huey Lewis's sports mm-hmm. album came out like they had a 30th anniversary mm-hmm. release they did the parody of the uh, the Hey Paul really scene yeah. with yes. Huey Lewis as Patrick Bateman and Weird Al as oh, Paul. I oh love my that. God. And it's, it's search for it. It's really, really great. That movie kicked off my love for Phil Collins again because I like loved the Tarzan movie as a kid. But it was oh like my, my mom and I like bonded over Phil Collins, and then I like was like a teenager. Was like mom, mom, your music sucks. Um, <laughs> and she like Coldplay and stuff. And now I'm an adult, and I'm like, no, my mom has the best music taste. Can ever. I just say? <laughs> There, there is no more stark reminder of our generational difference than that your intro to Phil <laughs> Collins was Tarzan. It, yeah, yeah, it was. Isn't that crazy? Well, it's amazing. Yeah, it was like that and like, uh, she, uh, what did the CDs I remember were like Bob Marley. Uh, Bob Marley legend. Yes. Of course. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Phantom of the Opera. Yep. Um, and it was the original, uh, original Broadway. Broadway. With, yeah. With, uh, um, what's Sarah Brightman. Sarah Michael, Brightman. Yes. Michael yes. Exactly. Yes. Wow. Um, and it was the Tarzan soundtrack and uh, Coldplay. Uh, <laughs> which album is the one with the frozen polygonal man on it? I don't remember. See, the, what? There's parachutes. There's yellow. I fucking hate Coldplay, by the way. Yeah, uh, it's fine. I don't know anybody who likes Coldplay. Dan- I, I, Danny, I'm fine Danny with them. Likes Coldplay. I'm so I'm like shocked by this. Really? Yep. That's what he told me. So next <laughs> under the what... covers, we're gonna get a yellow. <gasps> Never getting a Coldplay cover. Cold, Coldplay is great for like singing 
singing parodies of it to your dog. Like I, I yeah. sing about his farts, like his cold place, <laughs> not like like or like Viva La Vida is like it's like great to just really get weird. <laughs> it's it's yeah. legitimately dun, 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 one dun, of those yeah. things <laughs> that I don't understand how other human beings like it. I like, I, I think that's fair. Like I, I could definitely yeah. see how like unappealing. <laughs> I remember stealing my mom's iPod, which was the one where it like didn't even have like the real screen. I mean, not the shuffle, but like it was the grayscale, like Mm -hmm. fucking eight bit iPod. And she just only had like cake songs and Coldplay. (laughs) And I would steal it and go sit in the corner and be like, I'm so It's a good podcast. Coldplay and cake. Coldplay. Anyway, all right, let's let's yeah, yeah we let, let's do, do another email. But actually, everyone's like, we love the digressions. Keep yeah. doing it. But we, this <laughs> oh, will be we will. four hours. It's every podcast, baby. Oh, Ali, do you want to read this one? Sure. All right, let's do it. All right, this is. Do I read the name? Just the first name? Do I read any um, names? You can basically just read the body of the email. Okay. They usually, unlo- well, if they don't identify themselves by the end, then just they do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is from Darren, uh, thirty male. Pronouns are he, him, his. They say. Hey guys, I've been listening to the show. I love how I just actually like disregarded their pronouns <laughs> entirely to be okay. safe. Um, the, they is a, it, is, can also neutral. be a generic yeah. thing, right? I just default to it mostly. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey guys, I've been listening to the show since you started and I wondered if you can help with the dilemma I'm having. I have a friend who has recently started making and selling adult content and I can't decide if I'm going to buy any or not. She has come out to see both of my bands multiple times and she has watched some of the content that I made for my YouTube channel. She has supported me in my endeavors and that is a favor that I often like to return. And if I'm being totally honest, seeing her naked would also be nice. However, I have a very strict personal rule about never masturbating to friends. I feel like even... <laughs> Brian, <laughs> Brian's head is in his hands right now. <laughs> I feel like even if I watch her content without touching myself, that's getting dangerously close to breaking my rule. Also, I don't know how to not be creepy when asking, hey, can I see your porn? Would it be disingenuous to buy a clip and then just not watch it? Um, so Layton uh, and I have actually discussed this already. I, I have not. Yeah, uh, so this is so, your first listen to uh, that. I, I read the email. Here's mm-hmm. my take. Mm-hmm. What the fuck is going on right here? Uh, <laughs> what the fuck your, is going on here in this on? day? <laughs> there's, there's so much to unpack yeah, here. It really D- is. Dude, are uh, you asking us permission to jerk off to your friend? Like, like uh, he keeps saying that, like, I want to support her. Like, dude, don't, don't, don't buy the. Okay, look, if, if it's all about supporting her, buy the porn anonymously. Just buy like. No, 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 just give her money. (laughs) Give her cash, buy her dinner, Jesus. Well, that that is true, that's better. But but you could imagine a a version of this where he wants to support the project as well as the person. Fair enough. So if, if, and this is a big if, if it's legitimately about supporting that project, I guess it's okay to buy it, but, oh. I, this, seeing I, I, her, my, my seeing gut her reaction naked would also be nice is the tell d- for yeah, me on no, that. That's, yes. exa- that's exactly right. And so my gut reaction is, how dare you? <laughs> Don't get anywhere near this porn. <laughs> like... It's fine to think your friends are hot. In fact, that's great. Like, have fun. But like, <laughs> don't don't move it anywhere beyond. Hey, I think my friend is hot. Like, that's well, that's that, that's and, crossing and also, a line. Because you don't he's cross. like, I don't know how to not be creepy when asking. Hey, can yeah, I see your porn? If he that. knows that she's doing it and presumably can find it, why would he need to ask her? Well, yeah. that, that's exactly right. So if it's like a thing where you have to ask her to see it, mm-hmm. oh my god, don't do that. Yeah, no that, that's, way. It's no. literally the like um, nudes uh, in. Uh, Unless question mark. It, to me, the vibe is nudes. just. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> the episode unless. title. <laughs> nudes, unless. Is that a is that a thing? It's a meme. Okay. Yeah. It, it, uh, to me, this person, and this is a little judgy, but you're allowed. I I just feel that this person uh, struggles with speaking to women that they're sexually attracted to. That is. Mm. And. And well, they, I'd say that's a fair they, I mean, and, and they, they, they basically said it. Um, but it, it's like whether or not you jack off is up to you and it's your business. Yep. And you being uncomfortable with not being able to look at them in the eye or speak <laughs> to them after doing it. Like, there are millions of men that jack off to their friends yeah. and are capable of being polite, normal human beings to them. That's weird, and no one wants to know about it personally because it makes no. it weird. Yeah. But like that's keep that shit to yourself. Yeah, like, you don't care. Like nobody, just keep it nobody to ever has to talk about what they jerk off to. And no, I feel like exactly. so many problems exactly. could be solved if they're just like, I'm keeping and it to myself. Yeah, you know who wants to, to know what individuals jerk off to? Literally nobody. Nobody. Like, it, least like, of all your fucking friends. Yeah, no. Yeah. Like, Sorry, it, that sounded very mean in the way I said it. <laughs> no, but you're allowed. Nobody Why would you say it in front of to. your friends? Yeah, <laughs> unless that's what your friendship is founded on. 
if which you're, is clearly which not is clearly yes exactly like it has turned into the sexual root because of this person's uh like this woman's uh like is this a job i could i can't, I can't uh, is it a hobby or job i don't know it's that he yeah. said just said she's been making she's porn. just making hun- clearly, porn it sounds content. like there's some way to to buy if it's about okay let, let me here's another mm-hmm. line in the sand if there's no way to buy it yeah <laughs> what the fuck like <laughs> Automatic <laughs> red flag. There's no, if, if if there's no way to purchase this, under absolutely no circumstances yeah. should you say, "Hey, let me see that porn." Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, is it? I'm, that, that's that's crossing a line. I I'm, mean, I'm uh, assuming yeah. that this is like, it, it, did she start an OnlyFans? Yeah, like that's what the vibe is. Or yeah, like, because it's like, like has yeah. a uh, to buy a clip. Yeah, or it, what's the website that everyone uses? The camera, whatever. It's yeah, like you're using the, this person. And clear. So the, my question for the context of this is: Did you find out just because you're mutually friends on social media, and you just happen to see that like she converted her stuff into like a, a like eighteen plus account, or is it like something she mentioned to you, and was like, don't find like like did not give you the avenue to see it? Yeah. Because if you have the avenue to see it because you're like mutually friends on Twitter or something, then it's kind of like, well, it's there, and she knew that everybody that was following her could see now that she's doing this is her business. Um, but if it was like, hey, oh yeah, I'm, I'm just doing this now, and you guys like saw, talked at a show or something, then it's weird for yes, it's very weird for you to be like, oh, can I see? Also, because it's just yeah, a conversation don't. then, right? Yeah, and it, it, even if you're acquaintances or really good friends, either of those fucking suck. Yeah. Like, just don't do it. Like, there are millions upon millions of other porn clips that you can watch. You don't need it to be of your friend if you want to support her directly support her and just give her money if i i would say the furthest you should go is be like hey it's cool that you're doing this i'm not going to seek it out but like good for you buy her a yes, gift that, card that, to a porn store that like, is a oh yeah just buy her a gift card to a you know sex what? shop it's that, that yes that's great that's, that's like it's nice. cool that you're doing this is a great thing to say in context that could also cross a line you don't want to cross yeah right yeah like it, it, it it's unclear to me if she want if she wants you to know that she's doing it, that's what you, you, were yes. just, you both were just saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'd say if you get the sense that she wants you to know she's doing it, saying, hey, great job, congratulations, good luck, mm-hmm. it's totally fine. If she doesn't, don't touch this with a 10-foot Yeah, pole. yeah, like, really. It's just a bad idea. Yeah. It's scary. It's also the vibe of this just overall reads to me, which is a big character read for me, but it reads to me like I know it exists and therefore I am gravitating towards wanting to get it at all costs, even though I am writing out the costs in this email right now. The yeah. call and of the void. The call, the call, yeah, it's very much like the call of the void. And I just want to say, like, if you struggle with that all the time, work on it. Yeah. <laughs> like I, that, that specific call is probably calling you and other things. Like for me, it's food. Like I'm always being called by food. Oh, I want to yeah. eat food all the time. But it's like at a certain point, it's like, what is this what is this thing I'm seeking filling in the void for that I actually totally. need? Which is usually just water. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. need to drink and, water. And this <laughs> this feels like uh, we should probably wrap it up, but uh like he's trying to justify wanting to yeah. jerk off that, to his friend with all these other like reasons. That. And it's like, dude, you know fuck, also God damn it. If you want to jerk off to your friend, fuck I guess fine. Like just Yeah, no one's gonna don't stop tell anyone. Don't tell anybody, no one's gonna stop you. I mean it's that's a fine There's and, no jerk off police. Yes. No, there really isn't. There's God. I want to pull out my badge right now. <laughs> Shit. If Brian you're a jerk Wetch. if you're a jerk off cop, you have to tell us. <laughs> there there another great episode title. If you're a jerk off cop, <laughs> you have to tell us. Okay. I, I think we we've pretty much wrapped that one up. That's it's a hard no from pr- from mm-hmm. all of us with maybe a tiny, tiny asterisk, but mm-hmm. that asterisk asterisk is so small that you can't see it. All right, next email. So I've been in a friend group for a few years now. It's been a guy friend group with one girl. The said girl had a boyfriend up until recently, and now I feel like everyone in the group is heavily simping over her. But the thing is, everybody is so open about it. It's the group's inside joke of who can get closest to the girl. It really sucks for me because I just feel like I can't relate to any of my friends who I was close to. Now all they do is focus on the girl, and it's frustrating. Even when this girl isn't present and I'm with them one-on-one, it feels different. It feels like all they care about is this girl. Parentheses. They were like this to an extent beforehand, but knew they didn't have a chance, so it was fine. Close parentheses. Also, well, I have, I have something to say about that. <laughs> this girl is aware of this too, and is completely cool with it, and I think she just enjoys the attention. I don't have any close friends other than, other than these few people, so it's making me feel kind of lonely and anxious. Sorry for making it so long. Also, yes, I've talked to them about it, but they don't really see it as a problem. Thanks. Did uh, this person state their age? No. And can I can, you I can only assume this person is a teenager. 
No, I think they could be in their twenties. I, I, I know, like tw- a diamond. I, I could pick one of these out online. I, I think I understand from context, but can you please define simping? S- sucker idolizing, idolizing. mediocre pussy. Okay. So that automatically sounds like a warning sign that this term is being used. Yes, that's mm-hmm. anytime somebody says that, I'm like. And what what is the behavior? It's 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 what this sucker idolizing mediocre pussy, like being overly ingratiating with women to like suck up to them. Yeah, that you have judged also to be mediocre in some sense. Yes, so yeah. you're amazing. Let's immediately make it and... sexual by talking about mediocre pussy. Yeah, uh, putting them down, but also trying to get their attention. Yeah, sorry, Anon. Uh, yeah. I'm already, I'm already feeling a little wary about you here. The, in the way that you're talking about how, like, oh, well, she likes the attention. Having been this woman in a group of male friends who all want to fuck you, I don't know about that, bud, because <laughs> it's a bad feeling. Um, but I, I, what I'm curious about is, I'm reading this email again. I'm looking at it. Is the person saying that? they're not comfortable with this or are they saying I kind of get that sense I think that they're steeped in the culture of their friends but they are they have the red flag sense but they're not necessarily you know they're 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 also buying into the sexism of simping well um, what's the question bit. is really what I'm asking here I, I okay you I know what? a question removing all the gender issues from mm-hmm. it essentially someone else is getting more attention than you and you're upset because the dynamic of your friend group has changed okay, in a way it that is. excludes yeah. you. I can't relate to any of my friends. That, that's yeah. that's yes. where the, the crux is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, this is, again, maybe too fast a judgment. This feels like totally unacceptable behavior to me. And yeah. And also, why are you allowing your friends, like, to, I don't know what level of gross they're being, but, like, I don't know. Either it's they're just being nice to this girl or they're being like overtly like Sexual. sexualizing yeah, and shitty. Awful. Yeah, and it's like you don't have to put up with that. Uh, but you also don't have to be a dick towards this girl just because you're mad that they're paying attention. So to her. yeah, what do you, uh, since you said you can relate to this perspective, mm-hmm. like what do you think? Do you think the girl, according to this guy, which I, I actually find hard to believe, the girl is quote completely cool with it. Certainly, yeah. there's a yeah. long history of women pretending to be yes. completely cool yeah. with yeah. something because you which still want to stay uncool. friends with them. I mean, this was me like, like yes. most of my childhood, early teens, where it was like I had a bunch of guy friends, all of them were in love with me. I didn't reciprocate. And they just like negged me. I remember one time I logged into one of their email accounts because they were stupid and I figured out what their password was and I name searched in there. <laughs> More, I, morally debatable, but yeah. continue. But, well, I'm like 12 in this yeah, situation. Right. Um, and I found out that like behind my back, their nickname for me was whore. What? Um, yeah. So <sighs> it, it totally went all of them are after you while simultaneously negging you. And I'm not sure if that's the situation, but for me it was like they would just be like super overly sexual, but also making fun of me. At 12? Um, yeah. Ooh. So yeah. stupid. Yeah. Bad time. Um, but it, it totally makes you feel not like a person. And I'm sure you can relate. To, yes. I'm sure both of you can relate to when people put you on a pedestal. It's just as dehumanizing as if mm-hmm. uh, as when yes. they're shitting on you. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, God, it, it's a really shitty feeling. And maybe she is cool with it, but it, it's bad when you feel like the only reason people want to talk to you is because they want to yeah. fuck you. Yeah. Well, also, if, she, if they are young, it's kind of like, well, when... I was 12 and I had a bunch of guy friends too that were clearly like weird and everyone was going through puberty. It was like more like I don't, you don't know what to make of that socialization. Like you're constantly being like bombarded with like a uh, teen boy sexuality and you kind of just like play along because you don't know what it all truly ultimately means. But if these people because are, they don't, I, the boys they don't, don't either. either. Yeah. Right? And they don't understand what harm they're doing and That's right. because they, they're also been steeped in it, but you come out of it and you're like, God, I feel fucking hate these guys like that the, ultimately yeah. the conclusion is the same whereas the guys are like well i wish you dated me it's yeah. like it's like or i wish you liked yeah. me back the, and it's, you know it's the what? hard part you know it seems like a good road to at least figuring this out a little bit is if you anon talk to the girl about it like get yeah. to know her better outside of the context of this group yes and you know I, i'm sure if she's a part of your friend group there's probably good reason beyond your friends kind of being shits like that mm-hmm. she's a part of it you probably have things in common and if you can get a little bit closer to her and learn more about mm-hmm. her you can maybe see like if she isn't cool with it then you can help become an advocate for her because mm-hmm. like i think pitting yourself in the inherent nature of how you write this email like pitting yourself against her is not productive i agree and i feel sounds- like 
Sorry, please. No, I just feel like like you could you kind of this person uses the word simping and they kind of align themselves with their male friends, but are wishing she would like leave the equation. But truthfully, it f- sounds to me more like she and him are would have the most in common out of the people in this friends group and yeah. could mutually become better friends than all of these fucks. Yeah. Also, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, oh, go ahead. Um, you grow out of friendships, especially yes. I'm assuming early twenties, late teens, like. You grow out of it, and I, I'm sure we've all been through the, like, when you're in high school or even as an adult where, like, you have the friend who gets into a relationship, and then they just stop talking to you, and then they get dumped, and they're like, oh, we're friends again. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, that totally happens. It's like dudes get into girls, and then it becomes annoying. <laughs> but yeah. it, it goes the same in the opposite direction, too. Like, I don't know, bud. There's a hard choice. What I was going to say is there, there's a probably morally correct but socially very difficult choice to make. Yes. Which is to tell these people, like, hey – not 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 the girl here, but the the other guys in the group. Uh, what you're doing is alienating me, and I like I feel like I can't. A, a I feel like it's wrong, and B I feel like I can't relate to you guys anymore. Um, that's a very hard thing to say. I'm not saying you have to say that. Uh, I think it's to me the morally correct decision. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make it something you will or can do necessarily, but. Like they, uh, I think it's okay to, to to say something pretty direct, even if it's not quite that black and white. Yeah. Which is just like, you know, maybe not in a group because that's a very different dynamic. Mm-hmm. But to pull people aside and just be like, Are "You guys okay with this? Like, do, mm-hmm. do you see what's going on here? I know mm-hmm. you do it because a yeah. lot of times this kind of group dynamic, there's like one leader who yeah, is, is the person that kind of instigates the behavior, mm-hmm. and then the quote unquote followers will. Uh, and it d- this doesn't make what they're doing right, but just group dynamics will then go along with it because they're like, oh, the, you know, that one's doing it. So mm-hmm. I guess we're all doing it now. Ha, yeah. ha, ha. And then it just becomes a thing that the whole group is doing. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if there's if there are people that you think might be more uh, aligned with your perspective, that is to say the followers in, in this scenario, mm-hmm. I would just pull pull one of them aside and just be like, look, I'm really not comfortable with this. And I don't think we should be doing it. What do you think? Mm-hmm. And if they agree with you, start hanging out with them and not going out with the group all the time. Yeah. It, like, you don't have to make it a con- confrontation yeah. with everybody. You can just start, you know, going your separate ways. You can also gray rock it. Like, you don't have to engage with it. If they're talking about it in a group chat or whatever, you can just change the subject. Like, yeah. Yeah. You can just keep doing it and then they'll, you know, get the, like, mm-hmm. okay, fine. You don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. yeah. It's good, rough. Good luck. Uh Talk, talk to that lady and see how she's feeling yeah, about I, it. I mm-hmm. really don't think she's cool with it. No, I don't think so. Based on what you're saying, but Yeah. And especially if you are the one who is not, who isn't simping but you're still using that kind of phrasing yeah. and description of the situation. I think you got some shit to unpack, dude, and I think your friends especially have some shit to unpack. But what was the other thing that made me do a double take here? Oh, this one. They were like this to an extent beforehand, but they knew they didn't have a chance then, and um, it was fine. I think that was the one. Mm-hmm. I, I don't even know what else. So to say. I'm assuming she's single, <laughs> and yeah. like every man like, wants yeah. to <laughs> assert himself as an option by being a total piece of shit. You should just give your friends the advice that if they want to get with her, they have to act like they aren't into her at all, and just make that or just the like, mutual. Just ask her out. Like <laughs> if you want to go out, there's an ask her out. Yeah. Yeah, or that date way, other women. This isn't yeah. like the fucking bachelorette it's over true. here. It's also like asking someone out. It's a great way to judge if they want to go out with you. Yeah, it yeah. is. It, you'll like, get your it's answer. The because only they will way you'll know. Yes or no. <laughs> And I mean, hopefully, like, I guess there, there are gray areas where they're like, I don't know. Okay, fine. Maybe that, that can certainly happen. But like, I don't know, eventually just kind of falling into dating certainly does happen. I've certainly been in that situation a, a bunch, yeah. uh, but it's, it's always better just to ask. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you can get that answer. But then if they say no, don't bother them anymore and stop being sexual and weird. Yeah. Or, you know what, in general, this is always the thing with people that you're into and especially like young men, especially treat women like people, like yeah. just treat them normal. That's right. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, you know, I, of course, I was a young man once. Yeah. I can very much relate to this uh, kind of, I don't know if this person is a little on the nerdier, geekier, socially mm-hmm. awkward side. I'm going to say Maybe. Uh, if not probably, I certainly was. I had no idea how to ever ask anybody out on any kind of thing. So I certainly sympathize with the... Simp. Like... <laughs> Sorry. I, Sympathetic. I, I sympathize with the the feeling of being completely at sea with this and not knowing yeah. how to do it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, that is, is something I certainly went through and I'm sure made some bad or awkward or weird mm -hmm. choices at the time. But, yeah. you know, that doesn't mean you should ever dehumanize someone mm -hmm. or treat them as anything other than, uh, than, than a person. Uh, good luck, bud. Uh, and yeah. let's let's get into the last email. Hi, Leighton, Brian, and special guest. You can call me L. I'm 19, and I use she, her, hers. This is going to be weird, so prepare yourselves. So in my main group of friends, there's four people, two girls who I'll call Carol and Amanda, and one guy, Fred. Carol recently started dating a mutual friend of Fred and I named Mary. I was totally cool with that. Carol had a lot of shitty exes, so I was happy that she was with someone who, as far as I know, was a good person. One night, I get a text from Fred saying he's upset because Mary, Amanda, and Carol are planning on having a threesome, and they didn't invite him. <sighs> I got really upset, firstly because it sucks to hear stuff like that secondhand, but also because he expected me to comfort him when that info made me upset as well. No one wants to hear all your friends are fucking behind your back, and you're the only one not hot enough to be a part of it. I know it's none of my business what my friends do with their sex lives, it just hurts, I guess. I talked to Carol about it, and she said I could join but I'm 99.9% .9 sure she just said that out of pity. Do I just need to get over myself and ignore the situation? Is it okay to be upset? I'm not as upset as I was in the moment, but it still sits wrong with me and I need advice on how to move on. All right. I have a short answer to the question, do I just need to get over myself? And my answer is yes. Yeah. Like the, I, I understand that this is, you know, that, that, that can hurt. Actually, I do relate to that, yep. right? It, you feel like, who cares about fucking? Yeah. Even if they were just hanging out. Yeah. You'd oh, be upset. Sure. Like the fucking yeah. raises it to another level. But even yeah. if these three people were just hanging out without you, mm -hmm. that in and of yep. itself could be weird and off putting. Like it, but on the other hand, you can't tell people what to do. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. th this is just like very messy. Additionally, like Fred trying to butt his way into a threesome of three, three women, women. Yes. Yes. whose sexuality, I don't know, they could be attracted yeah. to men, but that's, ooh. That, that, that right away, mm. it's like he's upset he wasn't invited to their all-women sex thing. <laughs> like, yeah. come on, dude. Like, it, what? Why? I don't even understand that. Oh, my God. Also, it, there's the line about... Um, Not being hot enough? She said I could join, but I'm pretty sure she said it out of pity. That's the thing about any sort of group sex... Everybody has to be completely on board with it. Oh, yeah. Everyone. Yeah. If there is one person who feels even slightly bad about it going into it, do not do it. Also, you shouldn't be doing these things with people you were that close with. Like, right? I feel yes. like, if, you're, if you're in a relationship, get a random person. Yeah, like, you have to. Like, that feels like the most basic rule. But these, also, these are also relatively young people, Yeah, they're right? teens. They're in their teens. I mean, uh, it just, uh, I feel like the insecurity here like so i feel like the person writing this is insecure about it because they presume it's not they don't they aren't attractive enough to join this thing yeah, but it yeah. sounds to I me it, yeah it, well it, it sounds to me also that like that projection of that fear is maybe the reason like the insecurity itself is the reason they wouldn't invite you because they weren't sure if you would be cool with the sexual act itself if you were i don't know their experience level i don't know anything i mean you guys are all relatively yeah. young you aren't going to be fully experienced in what all of sexuality is it's going to be fucking means. awkward it's going to be awkward so like honestly to me you not being invited sounds like you dodged a bullet yeah <laughs> to me because yeah. like i don't know what the fallout i mean you regardless of do do the three other ladies know that fred is upset about yeah. not being invited to the threesome? Do they know that you're feeling upset? Like, there are so many things that can, like, emotionally go wrong within oh. any sort of, like, friend mm -hmm. group, mind in field. group yeah. sex of, like, I'm with my partner and I feel jealous because they're paying more attention to the other person or I feel bad yeah. about myself or this makes me feel insecure about my own body. Like, And so you're not supposed to bring that in. So if you already, yeah. like, if these people, one thing, Fred, he's bringing in something that nobody wants um, and that's bringing, and bringing it attention to you. And, like, who knows if the three women involved are, we're all, like, are, like, all on the same page themselves. Yeah. So if they were and this was, like, a comfortable thing, then it's perfectly valid for them to only want to start with a group of people that they feel safe and comfortable with exploring their sexuality with. And that yeah. is not an insult to people that aren't invited. That just is the safest option 
to explore your sexuality in that situation. Yeah. If it is already weird, then bringing in more people with more emotions and baggage is just... Such a bad idea. The more people involved, the more ch- more chances it's going to go wrong. Also, like, what 19-year-old has a bed that's big enough to right? house four people? That sounds... I mean, you're making an assumption with a bed. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, it's probably yeah. just the Mattress floor. on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I oh. think um, L it would behoove you to stay out of it and yes. it, just know that it, this doesn't reflect poorly on you at all. Mm-hmm. Like, it, yeah. you know, I understand that feeling of like everyone, everyone's being hot together and it makes you feel unattractive, but that doesn't mean that you're unattractive. Like it just happens to, it deals with the dynamics of a threesome. Yeah. Like it has yeah. nothing to do with you. Good. And it's really easy to look at that stuff and assume it has stuff to do with you, but it's, it's really not. It's more about them than it is about you. Also yeah. good general rule. Don't have sex with your friends. Yeah, really. That's like, probably the number one. I'm sure there are exceptions and people who fell in love and got married and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But it's don't, a, it's don't, a don't have sex with your friends. It messes everything up. Yeah. It, yeah. Just it, just like explore your sexuality in a different space that's meant for your sexuality. These people might be crossing that line and bringing it into their friend space or that they're friends because they were exploring their sexuality together. You don't, I don't know if we know this or if you even know that, um, but... You know, I don't know. Do people that casually have sex with each other even hang out? I wouldn't know. But you know what? Actually, going back to an earlier email, this is a great masturbation opportunity for you. So (laughs) I strongly suggest you take advantage of it. You have three friends who are having sex with each other. Think about that. Yeah. Have some fun. Yeah, yeah. You you, you get material. Wait, we we just, where where, where did we land on the masturbating to your friends stance? It was like. I don't think there's anything wrong with it as long as. As long as as you're not making it public. Don't bring it Don't tell them. Yeah. yeah, like, you don't, like that's right. It's, you don't it, have fantasy to talk about is it. so, so different yeah. than like sexuality with another person. Like, like what you do on your own is not at all like it, it can be, it can and should, I think most of the time, should be entirely different from how you hang out with the person you love or the person you fuck. Yeah. 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 But don't let me from the jerk off police, <laughs> the jail police. catch you. <laughs> Because I will find you and I will jail you. We will put you in jail. Jacking off is illegal. It's it's wrong. It's punishable by one sandpaper glove. Oh, God. Horny people have no rights. Horny people have no rights. They're not protected under the United States Constitution. All right. Is that it for advice? Yeah. All right. Okay, emailers, thank you so much for your emails. Sorry if we were a little harsh on you. I feel like <laughs> we were a little harsh this time. We're, we're, we're just trying to save you some heartbreak because I think the thing that's fascinating about these emails is going through them and seeing how like universal these experiences are yeah. and how just like everybody has to go through it. We got so many more emails about like people of like, I'm in love with my friend or I feel like my friends are moving on without me. And it's like, oh man, this is, just, it's going to keep, keep happening. And you just got to feel secure in yourself and like mm-hmm. take care of yourself. I think the true advice for like every single person that we give advice today, the positive advice is like some things in life are really awkward and they make you uncomfortable and how you internalize that. And then like socialize with others is the most important thing. So you can be uncomfortable, but you should try your best to not make others uncomfortable. That's yeah, a very because good you know, because yes. you just know, like if others are making you uncomfortable, just the golden rule: like treat others how you want to be treated. Don't yeah. make it worse by projecting more of your discomfort onto them and making assumptions about them, about what they, what they think about you, what they do, what what like they're doing without you. You like, will never just know you. what another person is thinking. Yeah. You can only judge by actions. Mm-hmm. And if you're having an issue, facing it head on, even if it's going to be uncomfortable, not only does it usually help resolve the issue, mm-hmm. you gain that resilience and those uncomfortable situations start becoming less important because yes. you've been through it so many times that you're like, look – let's go. Like it, for me in this past year, I've had to like forcibly get way more assertive and I've had to have so many like difficult, uncomfortable, like I want to tear my hair out conversations. Mm-hmm. And every time always turns out better. And then I just like feel more confident about myself in general. Cause I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm capable of doing this. I'm capable of resolving a conflict mm-hmm. and setting a boundary. Like it's just a thing you got to do. And I think once you start leaning into it and doing it more, it makes your life so much better. Yeah. Be brave. Be brave, but like being brave doesn't necessarily mean you have to fight anybody. It just means that yeah. you have to be like just talk to sturdy. People. Yeah. yeah, like just you know be approachable. Yeah. yeah. Um. Shall we move on into our next segment? Yes. Which is oh, at some point we did play the peaches and lemons theme. Uh, sorry, the uh, oh, we didn't have an advice theme song. <gasps> That's right. Never mind. Maybe I should write one. A uh, slip yeah. of the tongue just led to yet another theme song. It, uh, it, theme songs more. It should be like I want lyrics to it that are like. We're not liable. (laughs) (laughs) 
Don't use That's, that. We're not liable. We're not liable. We're not liable for bad advice. We're not liable. We're not liable. We're not liable for bad advice. Uh, our next segment is our pop culture recommendation segment, which is Ooh. also the entire podcast, but... Of course. Uh, it's called What's Poppin', so... <laughs> I love that. What's poppin'? What's poppin'? Uh, it, named by Ethan. Yes. Oh, Ethan. Who came up Under with it duress. on the spot. Ethan yeah. is a genius. He's a peach. We got to, I don't know if this peach. is too much. We got to meet his dad last night, and oh, yeah. who is also a peach his dad is so cool you can just see like i mean you can see the resemblance you can see the relationship and you can see like that they're friends i think that was the coolest thing is like being friends with your dad and i'm like god i love a person that's just like yeah that's my dad and we're friends just like a supportive Bye. dad yeah anyway it, in my vibes. in my mind his dad's name is chester <laughs> Ch- chester nester chester <laughs> but i don't know that rip. that's that beautiful so this good. is my father sia and chester nester <laughs> Layden, what's poppin Oh, I'm going to start. Uh, you know what? I started reading in the past year. Uh, I went through a bunch of Stephen King books and I, for the first time, and I really fucking love Stephen King and finding like horror novels that are good can be really difficult. Um, and so I've, I've read a lot of very bad ones, but I realized I have not read yet read The Exorcist. And so I started mm. reading The Exorcist, mm. which is so fucking dope. It's so good. Hell yeah. Um, it's very faithful. I mean, the movie is very faithful to it, but it does this thing that's really brilliant and that I get so excited to see in horror media where it sets up a world in a story with its own rules where the characters don't know they're they're in a horror thing and so it's like a conflict in characters that are kind of doing their own thing and then the horror elements start to creep in so like when shit starts happening with reagan the mom totally brushes it up off and is like ignoring it and going about her own shit um and william peter blatty's prose is so beautiful Mm. like it's very floral which bothers me a lot of times when it's done poorly but it's it's perfectly floral within the world and it, it just like is very powerful and poetic and like it just totally moves you through it so I watched The Exorcist 3 recently. Also highly recommend Fuck Exorcist 2. Oh, it's but the worst. Exorcist 3, have you seen it? Exorcist 2, yeah, it sucks. No, I mean the third one. Yes, it's very good. <sighs> Brad Dourif. Exorcist 3 is Jeffrey Dahmer's favorite movie. He made a victim oh, uh, wow. watch it before he killed him. Uh, but William Peter Blatty wrote and directed that movie. A, really great director for a first-time thing, but that script is so like written by a writer, you know? Um, and just like, it it feels like such a perfect, like cohesive world. Um, yeah, it, it, it's fabulous. Highly recommend reading The Exorcist. I'm probably going to go home and read some of it. Heck yeah. Cool. Yeah. Allie, what's Uh, poppin'? I, what's poppin' with me last night? I watched, uh, Longshot, the Seth Rogen and Oh yeah, Shirley's Throne. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I, 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 one of the, one of the things about me that is the truest is I, I love most of the things I love. I love because they are very flawed Mm -hmm. or I don't agree with them necessarily. They don't have to be flawed. I just don't agree with them. The movie was not something I would ever really enjoy. It's supposed to be, uh, Charlie's, uh, is the up up and coming president or secretary of state. And Seth Rogen's just like some, uh, you know, he's him, but journalist. Yeah. He's like some (laughs) schlub journalist and they were like friends growing up and stuff. Um, and then they reunite and he becomes their speech writer and then they fall in love. Uh, and that's it, very that's very fan fiction. It's very fan fiction. Um, I really loved it, and I would never like ever gravitate towards any fantastical idealization idealization of romanticism of politics because I just nothing makes me break out into hives more <laughs> other than maybe talking about <laughs> coronavirus. Um, but I watched it and I loved it, and it made me instantaneously want to get a letterbox because I just I felt like Dude. there was so much. There's like the behind the curtain feeling of it, like you could see that the two leads respected the shit out of each other. Like it was like just like a delight to see them. Um, but like the subject matter and the, like, you know, the worldview of, of it isn't necessarily like something I, t- I, it was idealistic. And I sometimes like, I'm against that despite being a very romantic person, but I like truly loved, I really loved it. It's like mm. upsetting me because I disagree <laughs> with so much or I don't like, it's not anything of genre I like, but I, I yeah. really recommend watching it because I, mm. I want to hear other people's mixed feelings about it. Cool. Yeah, Charlize Theron is like really, really fu- funny. Un- unbelievably funny. She's like, great. So like, she cool. An excellent actor. The range. Yes. Very funny. Yeah. I wish she would kill me. Like I yes, want same. her to murder me. She's so beautiful and just like 
emanates this like aura power. of power, like yeah. pure power. It's so awesome. Did to you watch see her. Um, Young Adult? Yes, yeah. I love Cody. Young Adult. It's so wonderful. Very it's good. So, I, I'm like, such a big Diablo Cody fan. Like, oh yeah, the first season of United States of Terra is so good. Oh yeah, I oh, you know God. Jennifer's body. Uh, shit uh juno obviously mm-hmm. is great uh fuck what else did she write i don't know she's just like such a fabulous writer mm-hmm. and i remember when it was hip in like 2009 to shit on her which truly is just sexism uh <laughs> yep. and also just like being very anti-sex worker because she was a stripper um but yeah I, so good so good yeah I, I i do love a little seth rogan too like i love a i love a nightmare person and he loves encapsulating that yeah. but also like with resolve which i really loved in in this movie I don't know. It was a good time. It was it was really funny, and it just didn't have to be more than what it was, which is always like a fun thing. Like yeah. you don't have to like feel like you're getting swept up into the Marvel universe or anything. You're, you're just having fun. Yeah, Bri- just having Brian, a good time. Is yes. there a single romantic comedy that you like? Oh, I love romantic comedies. Are really? You What's yeah. your favorite? Um, you know which one I really really love is Down with Love. I haven't seen. Have Down you with seen love. this? It's uh, Ewan McGregor and fuck. Renee Zellweger. So oh yeah, that, I love her, her too. Um, and it is a so it's from it's probably from 10, 15 years ago, and it's basically a parody of the Doris Day Rock Hudson movies from the from the sixties. I don't know what those and are. And it's like everyone is a caricature in a fun way. It's sort of yeah. a period piece. Uh, um, it's just a really charming, mm-hmm. fun, beautiful uh, movie. It's it, it's it's like. Ewan McGregor is this total like he's like the manliest man. I think he's like a reporter. His name is Catch or something. I haven't seen this movie in a while. <laughs> that name. Uh, it's yeah, it's got. Should I look it up? I feel yeah, like I hell yeah. Look it up. Hit us with the hit us with the, the uh, catcher. Catcher, catcher. block. In yeah. the rye. He's a he's a writer. And, in the writer. Uh, here, I'll just yeah. read you the plot description. <laughs> It's 1962, and feminist Barbara Novak, Renee Zellweger, pens a best-selling book that details the drawbacks of love. She encourages women to forego serious relationships with men in favor of independence, workplace achievements, and satisfying sex. Despite her success, many men are taken aback by her progressive vibes, including slick writer Catcher Block, Ewan McGregor, who decides to expose Barbara as a fraud by making her fall in love with him. However, his plan has unexpected consequences. I love this and plot. It's, <laughs> it's so... it, because it is designed to basically be a parody of, uh-huh. or, or maybe an homage is a better uh, way of saying it, to these uh, 60s Doris Day Rock Hudson movies. God, that rips. And like, it, it's just a, it's, it's a great story. Uh, mm-hmm. And it, every, every, it, I think people hated it when it came out, or a lot of people hated it. Mm-hmm. But I think if you lack the context for it, it, mm-hmm. it, it loses a little bit of the luster. Uh, other romantic comedies I love. Let's see. What else? Uh, Phantom what else? Thread. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. <laughs> that is a great movie. Yeah. Yes. I call it a, rom- a sure. rom-com. I also call Red Eye a rom-com with oh, Killian wow. Murphy and R- Rachel McAdams. Of course, because Killian Murphy's in it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I watched every Killian Murphy movie ever. Oh, uh, you know what movie I really love is Ghost Town. It's Ricky Gervais. Oh, my God. I, I loved that movie I when I was a kid. That. It's a bit so. I know of it. Ricky Gervais and is it Greg Kinnear? Yeah. And uh, Tay Leone. And basically, uh, Greg Kinnear is in a relationship with this woman and gets hit by a falling air conditioner, I believe, and dies. Yeah. And becomes a ghost. Mm -hmm. And then Ricky Gervais can somehow see ghosts or something. He dies during surgery briefly. And then when he comes back, he can see ghosts. And so he helped, like... Isn't yeah. Alan Ruck in that movie for a yes, minute? Yes, I believe like so. Like he's like he's the trying, dentist or something. Is no, that what it is? but he's like a ghost, and he's like, "My, give this to my daughter." Oh yeah, right, daughter. right, right. She lost her toy. But like, I remember that movie. Fuck, what was the other one? Um, the Invention of Lying. I've There's never seen that no one. way those hold up. But I, I just thought Ricky Gervais was so funny. Like, I loved the original Office, and like, I mm-hmm. loved. Um, did you ever watch Extras? Uh, I know of it. A, but a I, little bit here and there. There's I've, no fuck. I'm, there's that show is in no way funny now like there's not a chance <laughs> although the david bowie scene is one of my all-time favorites the the kate winslet one where she's dressed like a nun and she's just like yeah. standing behind him like doing the blowjob yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> motion um there are like such good bits in there like daniel radcliffe dressed as a girl's a uh, boy scout uh talking about condoms like <laughs> i i really appreciate anything that gets actors to play themselves uh, themselves in a self-deprecating way but yeah like yeah. ghost town was good Kristen wig i remember being really like fucking mm-hmm. hilarious in it um I have to say one that literally everyone hates that I maybe is the only one that I like uh, is Trainwreck mm-hmm. <laughs> starring Bill Hader and Amy Schumer. <laughs> that, is that recent or is that like – Within the past few years. It was like the past few uh, – because I always get it recommended all – because I, 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 as soon as I watch three rom-coms, like every every Netflix and Hulu are like, you want to watch yeah. every single one. You want to see Notting Hill for the 3,000th <laughs> time. You want to watch – 
uh, Pride and Prejudice, which I do watch all the time. Yeah, that the yeah, yeah the Kate Winslet. Uh, sorry, Kira Knightley. Kira Knightley. Yeah. Pride mm-hmm. and Prejudice. It's, it's I've my never comfort. Seen it. I, I've been we trying, need to watch. Yeah, it I've been together. trying to get it's late really, to watch really it because it has Tom from Succession. It has Tom from Succession yeah. in it. Have you watched Succession, Brian? No, but I want to. Oh, it's delightful. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah. Someone on that writing staff has a fucking like femdom humiliation oh, yeah. cape, and it's very obvious. You know? <laughs> so good. Another great movie. Have you, have you seen uh, I Love You, Philip Morris? I have no, not. In that's like the Jim Carrey one. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a million. Jim Carrey and Ewan McGregor again, right? Yes, it is. I think. Mm, yeah. Is that right? Is it the one? Is that the one with Zoe Deschanel? Oh, is it Elijah Wood or you? I always confuse Elijah Wood and What's you and McGregor. I think I think it's I don't McGregor. Even know. <laughs> they all they yeah. all look the same. Yeah, they great. aren't. They don't look the anyway. same at all. Um, but Trainwreck, it, Bill Hader, and Amy Schumer. I. Yes, un- I like that movie. Unpopular opinion. I really like Amy I, Schumer. Inside Amy Schumer was a fantastic show. I think she's really fucking funny. Don't know about the joke stealing stuff, but like, <laughs> it's one of those things where everyone's like, "Oh, she and Sarah Silverman only talk about their pussy," and it's like, you guys sucked Louis C.K.'s dick for years when he's <laughs> literally talking about him co- almost committing crimes, and like you thought he was a fucking genius, but then like a woman talks about her pussy, and you're like mad about oh, it. No. I thought Trainwreck was great. I thought it was no. more. Bill Hader is a romantic lead. Ooh. <laughs> That's, That's the I stuff, was just baby. taking, uh, we, we were, this will be a digression, but uh, we were filming in this Portland podcast this weekend. This podcast is And we were, I had to ride down an elevator after the shoot with a piano. And one of the guys on the crew started playing uh, the Dracula puppet musical song from <laughs> Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Yeah. Right. It's getting kind of hard to believe things are going to get better. On the piano, you knew exactly the right chords That's and everything. Cool. And I Forgetting Sarah that. Marshall is a good film. That I really mm-hmm. like. I haven't uh, seen it so it's, long. It, it's great. As I, re- I mean, I haven't seen it in a while either. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's Jason Segel, yeah. Mila Kunis, Classics. Kristen Bell, Russell Brand. Uh, some really great music in there too. Mm-hmm. Um, Brian, did you did you tell us your poppin? Yeah, what's poppin? Poppin? No, what I was didn't. Poppin with you? Uh, I just I gave like six. <laughs> we were just talking about. I, I'm, just talking just about like, I'm, I'm so shocked that you're into rom coms. I would have assumed that. I, I'm not like. I mean, Rachel is definitely more into them than mm-hmm. I am. But I I love a good rom com. Um, all right, what's popping? Uh, my uh, what's popping this week is a new podcast I've been listening to Ooh. on Max Fun called Fanti. Hmm. Uh, How do you spell it's that? F A N T I, and it's these two queer black people who talk about problematic pop culture. Ooh, and that sounds fun. So their their good names are Travell Anderson and Jared Hill, and they are you know they're just they're super charismatic really smart really interesting it's a perspective that i don't have at all Mm -hmm. uh not being queer or black Mm -hmm. and i love listening to podcasts from people that are in some sense like i don't want to say the opposite of me but people who have a very different uh perspective on life i think that's important Mm -hmm. uh and these guys are just awesome they're really really funny and smart and they talk about so they've talked about kanye uh, mm-hmm. They talked about uh, Gail King recently, mm-hmm. talking about Kobe. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, they talked about uh, British actors, black British actors taking uh, black American roles. Ooh, interesting. Uh, interesting. So yeah, it's super interesting. It, it's, this sounds dope. It, it's awesome. Their, their chemistry together is fantastic. Individually, I just love them too. Uh, and the topics are all really cool stuff. And they also, so there'll be stuff. So they, they'll talk about, uh, you know, things that it's not just like, they're very careful not to quote unquote cancel people and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like they just say, Hey, I, I think this is okay. I really like this. This is the problem with mm-hmm. it. And they're very, it's this very like, Hey, there's, you know, two sides to how you can see mm-hmm. an God. artist or a person. Yeah, yeah, or a, for or sure. A piece. I, I think I it's, fully believe in all that. I love when it's people really, really are great. able to do critical thinking <laughs> instead yeah. of. Yeah. And it's very, <sighs> what I really love about it is all of their takes are, extremely nuanced and almost I feel like it's every five minutes on the the episode Mm -hmm. uh, on any given episode I'm like oh my god I never thought about that Mm -hmm. that's something that's not my viewpoint Mm -hmm. at all that's really interesting I guess that's you know that's now something for me to think about it's great Mm -hmm. and also the medium of a podcast is such a better place to actually have a discussion with like understanding body language and tone and actually being able to discuss it whereas when people try to have these conversations on Twitter it drives me fucking insane no Twitter's a disaster for this it's incentive like literally the structure of the website it's the affordances of it is what they call it like it encourages like the hottest take quote unquote oh, yeah. which is like almost never the right thing the answer is literally always somewhere in the middle it, it encourages fighting and encourages taking things out of context mm-hmm. you have to condense these like very complex ideas and short things you don't oh i hate it so much please mm-hmm. for the love of god if you're going to have those kinds of conversations have them in person mm-hmm. um it's so frustrating to watch people 
to fucking get into fights and try yeah. to cancel each other over. Oh yeah. But that, that's what's so great about these guys mm-hmm. is, you know, they disagree sometimes of mm-hmm. course, but it's every take is like a, well, here's, this is the pro and this is the con and mm-hmm. it's, it's just great. So they're only five or six episodes in. They're all fantastic. Fanti. Max I know fun. what I'm listening to as yeah. I drive. Oh, home. hell yeah. Today. Uh, and our next segment is peaches and lemons as always. And here's the theme song. Allie, what did you think of the theme song? Um, it was quiet. Quiet. Okay, good. We it could be louder. It, it could. It, you could really like just yeah. blast my Pe- ears. Peek it. Yeah. Uh, Layden, do you want to explain what peaches and lemons is? Yes, peaches and lemons is the thing that my aunt and uncle do with my nieces every night at dinner, where they go around the table and they share one lemon, which is something that was frustrating or that they didn't like, and then three peaches, which are things that they're excited about or grateful for. You know, in the past week, normally they do it for the day, but it's 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 it, the the day is young. It is not actually <laughs> night right yeah. now. It's late in day, late in morn, <laughs> late in morn. Uh, who wants to go for? I, I don't feel. I don't think I've gone first enough. Go for it. Go first. Go do first. it. Put you on the spot. Um, my lemon. Uh, ooh, I, I guess I don't really talk about this stuff that much, but I'll just say it real quick. I got a scary sounding medical diagnosis mm-hmm. yesterday. Nothing Corona related, so don't worry about that. But uh, got to go see a, a specialist now, so I'm a little little nervous about that. I hope uh, everything's okay. I think everything's going to be fine. As with all such things, it's usually you know the unknown that's scarier than the that's the known. True. But uh, yeah, so I've been that was just yesterday, and I'm seeing a specialist later today. Oh, so wow. we'll hope that. Yeah, let us know how it goes. I will. Uh, My peaches. We, I'll go through these real quick. Uh, We filmed a new NSP video in uh, Portland and on the coast of Oregon this weekend uh, for a song I really like. Heard it was beautiful. Is that Uh, like in the Goonies zone? It is exactly in the Goonies zone. That beach is gorgeous. That was like, I I feel like that might have been on the like request form. Like it needs to be in the Goonies zone. It was, it was really fun. uh, And we took uh, uh, photos for the new album. That'll come out later oh, this year too. Wonderful. It's so, yep, directed by Mr. Tucker Prescott. Yep, God, what a Our peach. Boy. Uh, yep, so that was great. Uh, also, let's see. Uh, oh, uh, okay, this is a fast one. Audrey <laughs> walked up to me last night as I was uh, as she was getting out of her bath. So she got out of her bath. I'm like on the other side of the bathroom, and she walks up to me and she goes, "Daddy, sometimes I fart in the night." <laughs> <laughs> I was oh, like, we, "We all do, honey." Yeah. So that made me laugh. Fact of life. Yeah. <laughs> my third peach is an email I'm going to read to you. Ooh. Dear Brian, my name is Juan, and I work at the Williams College Office of Alumni Relations. That's where I went to college. I am reaching out to verify if a lost item that was retrieved back in May of 1996 by custodians belongs to you. What? Custodial Services Manager Ed, here at Williams, is coming, uh, is, is coming upon his retirement at the end of March after working for 36 years at the college. He stopped by my office this morning to relay a lost item that had been in his drawer but was never claimed. It's a high school ring that was retrieved from Gladden Room 46. Ed came by our office with the hopes of reuniting the ring with its owner, especially as he's getting ready to depart. Through a process of deduction, we verified that the initials on the ring, uh, we verified that the initials on the ring and the high school in question was Montclair Kimberly Academy and narrowed it down to you. Hence the question for you, is this your ring? Is it your ring? It is my ring. Wow. Yo. And this guy kept it in his drawer for 24 years. Wow. And I never, I knew I lost it at some point in college, didn't know when. Wow. And that I wrote him back this morning amazing. and I said, that certainly seems right. Does it? I remember I was a fencer in high school. So I was like, I think, did it have a fencing thing on it? I'm state champion fencer, in fact. If you Ooh, know. what the um, fuck? Uh, but that was like, I think it had a fencing thing. And the guy was like, yes. And so we exchanged emails and then. He said, okay, well, I'm CCing Ed, the guy who kept mm-hmm. it in his drawer. Hi, Juan and Brian. I'm so glad this worked out. If I stayed another 10 years, who knows what would happen? <laughs> Thanks, Juan and Brian. Enjoy, Ed. So this very sweet wow. guy kept this ring that he thought belonged to someone who really valued it, that <laughs> I didn't even know, which I did, uh-huh. but I didn't even know where to start asking. Like, I guess it was yeah, left, yeah. that was my old dorm room. Uh-huh. Uh I just left it in the drawer of the dorm, which I must have done. And then, you know, you're clearing out of college. Yeah, yeah. It's summertime. Yeah, yeah. Who the fuck knows Things what's even disappear. going on? And uh, amazing. 24 years later, I get an email and they're going to ship it back to me. That, that has so been cool. lost longer than I have been alive. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> wow. Yeah. That is incredibly dope. So that is that I love, I love a story like that, like a journey. 
I mean, it wasn't really moving around. It was just sitting in a drawer, but it was like they made the effort. That's uh, I love. I love. I was texting with a William, a William's friend of mine uh, uh, earlier today. And he said, well, you realize that this ring is going to make you visible to Sauron now because it has found (laughs) its way back to you. Uh As it always does. Yep. (laughs) Gotta look out. All right. That's my peaches and lemons. Wow. Um, May I go? Yes. Go for it. My lemon is that two days ago I had, or was this, no, it was two days ago, uh, I had a panic attack at work and it was one of those ones that just like came out of nowhere. I wasn't actively stressing. I just started getting the like, not tinnitus, but like when everything kind of dulls and you can't hear people and Mm -hmm. like you can't swallow and you can't get a full breath and you're just like, I'm dying right now. And Allie gave me a Xanax. Which is got you because I haven't nice. re- I haven't refilled mine in a while. Um, but it still it sucks because that totally sucks all of the energy yeah. from you for the entire day, and then you're just like, well, I'm fucked. Um, at least I'm not active. Uh, at least I'm not dying. Um, you for- usually aren't. Yes. When that happens. Yes. But for first peach, yeah, you never are. But yeah. you every time you're like, <laughs> rash- it feels like it. Yeah. rationally, no, mm-hmm. I know I'm not dying. But mm-hmm. what if I'm dying? What if what if it's real? Um, anyway, uh, first peach is that our friends Stella and Justin, who work for Real Good Touring, adopted a little baby puppy, um, who is like, I'm doing a thing with my hands. It's like puppy, 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 like little tiny baby holding one hand puppy. Burrito sized. Yeah. Large burrito sized. Yeah. And they've been bringing it to the office and there's like a big window into the RGT office. And so every time people walk by, we just like stand there and stare at her. <laughs> Um, and her. she's like the sweetest, she's got that new puppy smell mm-hmm. and that stubby little tail that's like sharp dragging. little teeth. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the best. Anyway, peach just get to see a pup every day. Um, second peach is animal crossing is coming out next week and I'm very excited. Um, after we're all quarantined for Corona, just playing some animal crossing baby. Um, third one also like life sim related is uh my really long stardew valley save on the switch finally finished the community center got to year three got a perfect score with grandpa and now i have that statue that spits out that iridium ore every day i don't gotta go to the mines anymore um this is like the furthest i've ever gotten in stardew valley and like killing it got truffle oil farm going married Mm -hmm. leah congratulations thank you yeah, I, I really It's a big day for you. I'm really happy with my wife who just <laughs> stands around and I'm I'm out here slaving. I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars restoring this community center that these pieces of shit in this town are ungrateful for. They don't do anything except I give stand them there. gifts and they're like, I hate this. <laughs> Fuck you. That was homemade goat cheese that I slaved over. Meanwhile, my wife is in a corner being like, This farm is nice and I'm like, I'm breaking my back <laughs> to keep this house running, to keep the lights on. They don't say no to diamonds like anybody. Everybody loves diamonds. They all and love it's like diamonds. you I don't you know jerks. you. You want me to give you a fucking diamond <laughs> that I almost died trying to get? Yeah, really. Anyway, fuck Stardew Valley, it's awful. <laughs> that, that peach turned into a lemon. <laughs> Allie. Go on. Oh, it's my turn. Um, it is your turn. Okay. My lemon. Yesterday my dog ate a wasp. And <laughs> <laughs> his name is Bear. Uh, and uh, He's a sweet boy. The, yeah, wa- the wasp or the dog? No, the wasp. Wasps are evil. Like they, we should. Also, if them. you knew one of their names, that would be unusual. <laughs> that would yeah. be weird. Uh, oh, this is Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Barry Jerry. Hey, this one's who's the guy that voices the bee and sign? It, wow. You you you, 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 have, you have the answer to your question. <laughs> who's the guy that voices the? That is the title of the episode. <laughs> who's the guy that voices the bee in Seinfeld? <laughs> that is. I'm wow, just that locking was, that in that right was, now. That was like. Like I've never done that. It was like <laughs> premonition. Like no, my brain just like stopped the ESP. Me. <laughs> um, yeah, ESP. he had a wasp. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> oh go ahead. <laughs> um, first of all, wasps are dicks. Uh, but yeah. he chewed it up, which was what described to me, and I was I was at work at the time and uh he did not have an allergic reaction so that's good but i we spent he 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 did have a little upset tummy i'm assuming from eating a wasp and he spent all night kind of like pacing and i did not sleep well Mm. because i care so much about my dog and i think i spent all my spare money on vet bills because i'm just the type of person yeah i'm the type of person that's like uh, vet 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 we go we go we go to the vet and then the vet's like he's fine just give him some yeah. give him some probiotics but if those wasps start, start breeding in his stomach inside of him yeah, and they it's, crawl it's out really problematic Whoa. yeah that would we got be, a real candy man type situation there <laughs> it would yeah. be really crazy candy man or wicker man situation yeah. oh yeah, yeah for sure i, Not I, the wasps. I hate wasps but he fuck him dog is a 
he ignores lizards, loves squirrels, loves bees and wasps, ignores butterflies. Hmm. So he's kind of got a good instinct. He he only goes to the assholes, but yeah. it's weird. Uh, that's, at least that's my lemon. if a bee gets you, you're like, haha, motherfucker, die. Yeah. You wasted it. Yeah, pretty much. This uh, is a mild inconvenience for me. <laughs> pretty much. Um, one of my lem- or one of my peaches. We did the lemon. Uh, one of my peaches is when I was on my way here, I was stuck in traffic, which is fine. It happens. But in front of me was a truck that was so dirty, like a big, like 18 wheeler. It was so dirty, um, that someone had taken their finger and written John 4, 16, <laughs> the Bible verse, like on it. And so I Googled it and it's the, the Bible verse is God is love uh-huh. essentially. Um, but above the Bible verse, someone had also in the dust drawn Pac-Man. <laughs> like chasing dots and like the the, the, the together the like I, I feel like they work together like god is love pac-man's eating dots like it, it was a it was a very good juxtaposition of two things that had no business being near each other yeah that's pa- pack 517 <laughs> yeah pack 517 pack 420 got um, a jesus kill screen up on <laughs> exactly it. Pac-Man is, is God. God yeah. is love. So G- Jesus kill screen is also a good, that one. Is a good a one. really yes. good one. Um, uh, another peach. Um, I just booked my room for San Diego Comic Con, mm. and it got paid for entirely. And we'll see what happens if I'm just going to San Diego to drink alone because they're canceling the convention due to coronavirus. Either way, I love San Diego, and it's not like I can drive myself there. I don't have to get on public transit, so I'm not really scared about going to a hotel. Like I'll just take the time in uh july but i always have a really good time in san diego so i'm looking forward to going to my favorite bar which is the lion's share mm. where you can get where's weird, that it's a uh, it's um across the street from uh the cheesecake factory <laughs> wow that was a really terrible direct it's in downtown okay, uh, right it. next to the convention center uh, is that the, the place that i've been with you twice yes i take everyone there steaks. so yes i take i take i've t- taken layton and vernon i have taken uh, my friends during TwitchCon, I love San Diego for conventions, but I also love just taking my friends to delicious places there, and I can't wait to yep. do that if anyone shows up, or just, you know, yeah. me, and, me and the man. Have you ever been to a World Curry in Pacific Beach? No, I haven't, it's but I know of awesome. it. There's a it's there's great. a cat cafe there now, too, isn't there? Oh, there might be. I yeah. It, 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 I've been in a little it's while. It's a vibe. Um, and then my third peach is that, my third peach is that I discovered, I have stopped drinking caffeine. Mostly. Me too. I have because I, I have too. Yeah, I stopped drinking coffee, and I was really sad about it because I'm definitely like a self-professed coffee lover, addict, everything. Um, but it's just too much for the anxiety. Like, you, it takes like 48 hours for caffeine to leave my body, so I had to like lower the dose to almost nothing. And if I have coffee, I drink one sip and then throw it away. Mm. I discovered. At Starbucks, you can ask for what is normally on the cold brews. They have like a salted cream foam. Yes, they have like Rachel a honey loves this. Fe- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they have all these. I discovered you can just get it on any drink. So I, I've been experimenting mm. with the green tea matcha. I got the salted foam on it. <sighs> and it's so delicious. I got a black tea with the honey foam on it. And I love it so freaking much. It's so delicious. And I just can get a small black tea now. And I steam awesome. and get the like thing I liked the best, which was the foam, not actually the coffee. The fo- like. I just want a cup full of the foam. Yeah, there's just literally, let me drink the foam. there's an empty vanilla sweet cream cold brew <laughs> yep. on the table that I, I asked for extra. Like, cup full of foam. On the top. Yeah. yeah. Give me oh, more so of that good. delicious cream, baby. <laughs> yeah. Slurp it up. But yeah. Um, I'm enjoying those drinks. Great. Cool. Well, Allie, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. We've yeah. been talking about this forever and it, it's nice to <laughs> it just, just out. hang out with one of my, two of my favorite people. Thank um, you. Thank you for throwing me in there. <laughs> you were an afterthought. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, Allie, where can we find you on social media? Um, I have an Instagram. It's uh, at Procreate, like Procreate, but with your bros. And then I have a Twitter. Allie made a hand gesture. Yeah, yeah she, she did. did a little, she did the little the yeah. <laughs> I have a Twitter. It's uh, at Lily Lou, which is an absurd name that I should have changed long before I decided to become anywhere <laughs> remotely related to public figures, but it's fine. And that's uh, Lily with one L. Yes, Lily, like the flower, and Lou, like the toilet, which is... L I L Y L O O. Yeah, I liked it because it really rolls off the tongue like Lululemon. kind of a nightmare. <laughs> it reminds me of Lululemon. Yeah. Uh, anyway, everybody, stay safe out there. Take yeah. care of your dang selves. Wash your hands. Uh, thanks for listening. That's the end of the podcast. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Late Night is produced by Brian Wecht and Leighton Gray. For more information, visit LeightonKnight.com. That's L E I G H T O N N I G H T dot com. Also, please follow us on social media. On Twitter, we're at Leighton Knight, and on Instagram, at Leighton underscore Knight.